As a science teacher, sometimes I struggle finding lessons that will motivate my students, can get free supplies for the classroom without having to beg around town for it, and find new ways to integrate the new STEM initiative, which is science, technology, engineering, and math. We also are trying to find to integrate the A component into STEM, turning it into STEAM. That art component brings uh, the creativity to projects that makes science projects pop out. One of the ways that we have accomplished this is through project-based lessons that are sponsored by various corporations, such as Disney, Discovery Channel, Honeywell, Siemens, the Fiesta Bowl, and through the U.S. Army. Participating in competitions outside of the school provides a method for students to create work outside the four walls of the classroom. When students know their projects are now a reflection of themselves that can be seen worldwide, the work is more polished. You can't blame students who wants to work on a project that will be trashed after a grade is put into the gradebook and never seen again. By participating in the Disney Planet Challenge, helped, it helped us organize a method to integrate STEAM into the curriculum. It also gave teachers a vehicle to increase communication for cross-curricular and cross-grade level learning. So this was your first time working on a large project of this mm -hmm. scale for the Disney Planet Project. So, yes. so what was your experience teaching the kids? Um, wow. Well. It was, it, was, it was a really good, I think, learning experience for the kids. We did a lot of research. We used our uh, netbooks that the school has. We looked at a piece of the project. Our specifically was on composting and how it affects our environment and how we can do composting to ultimately help our um, suburban garden system. The kids loved it. They jumped in, embraced the project. And many of them started composting at home, which was, which was great to hear. And others said, you know, hey, I want to do a garden. Parents jumped at the chance to do that. Um, so I think in that respect, it went further than I ever expected it to. They, the kids really took this, and it reached out into our community far more than I expected it to. Um, I'm Bobby. And I'm and, Luke. And we're going to tell you what we can and can't recycle. Um, we're from Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> And then, so you can recycle empty water bottles, scrap paper, clean plates, empty hand sanitizer bottles if they're cleaned out, um, tissue boxes, cardboard, paper bags, but not plastic. For seventh grade science, I had the students uh, research about the different cycles, such as the oxygen cycle, the carbon dioxide cycle, water cycle, nitrogen cycle and they had to research all the cycles and see how that these cycles affect our garden that we were completing and how the plants um, would recycle all of these different cycles just like they were learning about in what was inside their book. It really extended the project that uh, if we were just reading and how to do the cycles out of the book, it would be okay, but they really understood it after they saw that their plants were needing to be watered all the time and how um, it made sense that why do you need nitrogen? It's a hard concept for, for them to understand uh, knowing that there's other things just that, than water and sunlight for plants. Uh, so in that respect it really worked out well. They created movies for these cycles and some of the movies were pretty funny and they actually did a great job with them. So the little puff Boring. I know! <laughs> what are we supposed to do? Like, what are we supposed to do? This is just a waste of our space. It's just rocks. We have nothing to do with rocks. Seriously. No. Okay, so maybe we can start a suburban sustainable garden. We we'll always need it for more of that. Well, how do we do it? Well, I'm guessing we would get like a compost bin. Is that what they're called? Yeah, and don't you put like fruits and vegetables and like coffee grounds in there? Yeah, that's what you do. And okay. then, I mean, we need water because wasting water would be really kind of bad, I guess, for our environment. Ow! Oh, sorry! Hi!
My name is Max. And I'm Tommy. We're here to tell you about the oxygen cycle, which has not one, not two, not three, but four stages. Plants begin the first stage. It starts out when they use the sun's energy to convert carbon dioxide and water into carbohydrates and oxygen for us to breathe in and eat. The second stage begins when the oxygen passes through the atmosphere for a short period of time. The second stage also involves us eating plants for carbohydrates, or as most call it in unscientific terms, sugars. After the oxygen goes into the atmosphere, we then breathe it in. Notice the child waving in the background. And to absorb the carbohydrates, we must eat plants like this chip. which converts into energy. evaporation. It all happens when the sun's rays warm the water in the oceans, lakes, streams, or rivers, and it transforms into water vapor. The water vapor then digits its water source and becomes just another part of the air. Oh, cool. Yeah, well, the anyway. Eighth grade science, um, I had them kind of tie up everything. They tied up the sixth grade information where they were composting in the microbial action and worm action. Um, and then they also took the cycles from seventh grade. And it also helped them um, under, uh, review the work that they had done in sixth and seventh grade, uh, reminding them all about what they had relearned. Um, and then they took it a little bit further. They um, had to create a digital portfolio for the Disney project. They put it together. They had to verbalize it. They had to create uh, almost like a PowerPoint, but they had to take the videos that the seventh graders made and input those, and they took the pictures and the reports that they made from the sixth graders and input that. And then they also had to explain the, the uh, chemical reactions that take place with animals and with plants. So in respect, I think the, the project really gave a, a great higher order critical thinking skills, um, and it gave a vehicle also for them to collaborate with one another and to communicate with each other also. Um, sometimes they had to problem solve with each other, so they didn't agree with each other, um, but that's okay. If that's one of those life skills that they are going to have to learn how to do in the business world and how to work together. We brought in an expert from ASU from the College of Sustainability. She taught the students how to recycle, how to uh, compost and she brought in a big uh, bin of worms to show the kids how you can use worms for composting. The kids had a lot of questions and it was great to get someone from the outside to uh, to reinforce what they were learning in the classroom. Future generations, generations to meet their own needs. So what does that mean? You guys are the generation of the future. You're the ones going out 15 years from now into the working world, having families, interfacing with jobs. So what does that mean that future generations? Um, the role I played in this was my team of four um, sent me information and then I would take my laptop and um, write it all write it all down and edit it and then send it to all, to all of my teammates. And that's what I did for the Disney Planet Challenge. Oh, hello, I'm Cameron. What I did for my project was I made a video on the water cycle and the nitrogen cycle. In this video, we explain what the cycles were. We worked on the Disney Planet Challenge in sixth grade. We helped compost. And it was hard. It took some time, and the composting bin smelled bad. But in the end, we helped save the Earth, and that's what makes it happy. Hi, I'm Catherine, and I was part of the Disney Planet Challenge. Our grade mostly practice on what to compost and how to compost. And for example, you can compost like orange scraps and other food scraps. Um, hi, I'm Lauren, and I wasn't here when they feel, or when they were doing the Disney Planet Challenge, but I also, I learned from them that you can um, compost coffee filters and fruit 
to make soil for our garden and to, and it gives a lot of nutrients and um, to turn off lights and sinks when they're not in use. Hi, I'm Kenzie. I'm also in the sixth grade. I also helped out by making composting bins for every classroom so all the classrooms could take part in this challenge. Also, I made posters for the Ramada to say please recycle old food scraps for the new composting bin. Thank you. Hi, I'm Joe and I worked on the Disney Planet Challenge 2010 and 11. In this challenge, we learned how to compost and what to compost. We had a student from ASU to teach us how to save the environment and make the world a better place to live and to eat. So what do you think about the learning about vermicomposting with worms? I thought it was somewhat disgusting, but it shows how we can use our environment to make the world a better place. Okay, cool. So how can you tell me how we integrated technology into our projects? Mm -hmm. We use technology in our challenge by making PowerPoints to send to newspapers or to um, like Arizona news, news different news agencies. Yeah, different news agencies to put on like their website or even maybe put on TV. Okay, great. Davis. We also use technology when we were researching on what we can compost, on how we can compost. Okay, using the internet. Good. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. We use the netbooks to talk amongst our groups to help coordinate information. Okay, online chat. Okay. How about using video cameras and things like that to make videos? We could show how you would help the Earth by using cameras and recording examples. Okay, recording examples. Good. Riley. Uh, we could record everything we did to show people examples of saving the Earth. Okay, STEM. Not, not STEM on a flower, but STEM is science... Well, STEM means science, technology, engineering, and math, okay, and putting all those things together. So do you think we integrated science and technology? Definitely. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, how about engineering? A little bit. A little bit when creating what? Yeah. The water cycles in the garden. Okay, doing things in the garden, working on, on maybe the water, the watering the garden, the ways that we can water the garden, figuring out how, the, how to water the garden. How about math? Yes. We use mm -hmm. math in a lot of different ways. One of the probably most ways we use math was when we were watering the garden just to know how much water we really needed. Mm -hmm. okay. Or how much we would put in the compost at a certain time. Okay, how much to put in a certain time? Harder? Anybody else? Do you work harder on a project that you know outside people are going to see it? So like if you, since we did this Disney Planet project, knowing that the world's going to see it and we're entering this national contest, do you work harder on a project like that, or if you're working on a project such as making a, a diorama in the class, are you going to put more work into that? Okay, Colby? I'd put more work into it if I knew the world was going to see it. Okay, why? That way people have an example. Okay, so? Um, I prefer the world seeing it because, because um, you can show them how to do things, and it shows that you've made a difference besides just... Your classmates sing it, the whole world can see it. Okay, great. We're yes, Grant. For the world, because, I mean, more people are going to see it. It's not just the class, it's like the whole world. So okay. there's kind of some pressure into that. Okay, pressure to do a good job. Okay, good. Either way, in school or out of school, you should still always work hard on a project. But also, when it's just the world, you're, like Grant said, you're under pressure, and also you feel that... It can make a difference if you put more details into it. That's great. Um, I think that I would work equivalently hard on both because if you do it in school, I want to make it look good for the teacher so I can get a good grade, and like she can use it for later on years, and I want to do good, like for the whole entire world, so that it makes myself look good, and they can use it as examples for their school too. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. I think you would want to like kind of work harder because like you want to make a good example so you know like some other kids maybe in different countries will want to be like you and want to work a lot harder for things. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well I think that I work harder when uh, other people are going to see it because I want to make something good and not embarrass myself by making something terrible. Okay, good. I would work harder because you can show the world the seriousness of pollution and you can show them how to stop it. 
Okay. How would you feel now, you that think, someone in Africa happens to go online and, and see your project? What, what would you think? Mm -hmm. um, that would make me feel really good because it shows that we worked hard and we showed other countries and places how to do things and that they liked our work and they're going to try to. Okay. Um, I would hope that uh, he gets inspired by my project and would want to do the same thing, therefore not only helping the people in America but also helping other countries. Good. Okay. I think it, I would feel personally really happy because you're not only being f feeling happy that because someone else is seeing it online, you're also feeling happy because someone else has a chance to make a difference in the world. I think it would be really good for us because they could spread the word on how to stop pollution and help the world. Great. Okay, what about... Do you like writing a report or creating a video? A video. A, video. a, video. a report. A report? Okay, yes. you got it. More. Okay, has anybody made a garden at home? Um, so what I would do is I would take my parents' um, coffee filters and I would also take some fruit that I used to, that I would eat, like an apple core. And I would usually grind them up and make them into a soil and then go out and buy some sunflower seeds and make myself some sunflower seeds. Cool. Um, like I just went out and we bought a tomato plant and then we also bought tomato seeds and radishes and everything. We just planted them. Oh, excellent. When it rained, the worms would come out and we'd go and put them in a composting bin. Oh, great. To give them more food. What did you guys think about working on the Disney Planet Challenge? Awesome. This year we did very well for the Disney Planet Project and also with eCyber Mission. For the Disney Planet Project, we won first in state with five of our other projects uh, winning runner-up. For the, uh, there were four top winners and then there were only eight state winners. Every state had uh, had applied for the Planet Project but you had to have scored over 80% in order to be considered uh, a winner for one of the state winners. Uh, so surprisingly, only eight states uh, had projects that were good enough to make it to that stage level. So not too bad for um, uh, our school. I was very proud of our students. Uh, for the eCyber mission, we did very well also in that. We won first and second in state. First place state winners won uh, $1,000 each in savings bonds. So we had four students win uh, $1,000 for that. And then we also had uh, the second place won $500 in savings bonds.